Welcome fifth graders. Today we're going to do lesson 7.6. We're going to multiply fraction times fraction today. If you remember from the last lesson, 7.3, we did whole number times fraction. When we are multiplying fractions, you do not have to find a common denominator. All you are doing is multiplying top times top and multiplying bottom times bottom. If you get an improper fraction, make sure that you divide that to make it a mixed number by using TiVo. And then if it is a proper fraction or a regular fraction where the top is smaller than the bottom, just put it into simplest form. If we look at the first question here, it says Sasha has three fifths of a scarf left to knit. If she finishes half of that today, how much of the scarf will Sasha knit today? So she has three fifths of the scarf left to knit and she's going to do half of that today. The key word is half of three fifths. So we're taking half of the three fifths here. The word of means to multiply, okay? Because we're taking half of that. So we're gonna do one half times three fifths. As you look here, we're taking one half times three fifths. We're just simply going to take top times top, bottom times bottom. So we're gonna take one times three, and we get three. So the numerators multiply to get three. Two times five are, is on the bottom. So the denominator is 10. So we get an answer of three tenths. We check to see if that's in simplest form. And the only number that goes into three and also goes into 10 is one. So that is in simplest form. One half times three fifths equals three tenths. If we were going to shade this section here, um, we have a large rectangle cut into five sections. So it's cut into fifths. If we're talking three of, out of those five, that would represent the part of the scarf that she still needs to knit, three fifths of that. But now we want half of that. So we're gonna cut this in half and it says shade that yellow. Okay, we're gonna shade actually flip the colors here. It said shade it with yellow, I shaded it with blue. Now we'll shade half of that right there yellow so all we are looking for is there are three sections that are shaded yellow out of 10 total sections here so we're talking three tenths is our answer so to model that all we had were three fifths and we took half of that so out of this whole section we shaded half which was just simply three pieces out of 10 total that we made. Down here at the bottom, it does say compare the numerator and the denominator of the product, meaning the answer, with the numerator and denominator of the factors, which are over here. Just remember that we're simply just taking top times top today and then bottom times bottom. On the next page here, we're going to do very similar to what we did yesterday. Okay, this is four times five twelfths. And remember, when you have a whole number, we want to make it a whole number into a fraction by just simply putting the whole number over one. Okay, four over one is still equal to four, but it's now written as a fraction. Once we have the whole number four written as a fraction, we can just simply take our top number times top number and bottom times bottom. So we're gonna take four times five, multiplying the numerators, which is 20, and one times 12, multiplying the denominators, which is 12. We're going to get 20 
quilts. Now, what we did before was just simply take 20 and divide it by 12. We use T-bell because it's an improper fraction. 12 goes into 20 once, and we have 8 left over. So we get 8 twelfths. Remember, we have to put that into simplest form. So we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 4. And we get 1 and 2 thirds. That would be one way to solve this. The second way that they want you to see is when you have your improper fraction, you can actually simplify it first and then divide it for TiVo. So I know that 4 goes into both 20 and 12. So 20 divided by 4 is 5, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. Now I can take this improper fraction, 5 over 3, and TiVo it. 5 divided by 3. 3 goes into 5 once. Subtract. I get 2. Put that 2 as the numerator and 3 as the denominator. And again, 1 and 2 thirds. So what we wanted to show here is you can simplify first or you can divide it and then simplify it. So you can do either uh, either order here, but to get this answer, obviously we're going to get one and two thirds. All right. As we go to multiply here, question number one, we have six times three eighths. The first thing we're going to do is put six over one, and we're going to multiply that by three eighths. 6 times 3 is 18, top times top. 1 times 8 is 8, so we did multiply the denominators. And we get 18 eighths. We then need to divide that because it's improper. 18 divided by 8 is 2. And when we subtract, we get 2, so this would be 2 and 2 eighths. 2 and 2 eighths. And then we have to put it into simplest form. So we're going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2. And our final answer here in simplest form is 2 and 1 fourth. 2 and 1 fourth. Now, there is also another way that we can solve this. And there's a lot of students that prefer this because when they multiply, sometimes you're going to get really large numbers. So we're going to show a way called cancellation. We're going to cancel some of these numbers here to put it into simplest form before we even multiply. Okay, so when we're using cancellation, we are looking for numbers that are diagonal from each other. So I'm looking at those numbers right there. I'm looking at 6 and 8 and 1 and 3. And I'm looking for numbers that can go into both of them. Just like we do when we simplify, what can I divide 6 and 8 by? So first of all, 1 and 3, there is nothing that can go into 1 and 3 besides 1. So we're not going to do anything with those two numbers. But if I look at 6 and I look at 8, I want to think about what can I divide 6 by that I can also divide 8 by. And the answer is 2. We can divide both of those numbers by 2. So if I divide 6 by 2, 6 divided by 2, or 2 goes into 6 three times. I'm just going to already divide it like I do when I simplify. 
and then I'm going to divide 8 by 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Once I cancel those numbers out and I divide those, my fraction is already going to be as low as it can be in simplest form. So we're going to multiply 3 times 3, which is 9, and 1 times 4, which is 4. Again, the fraction's still an improper, so we divide it. But this time, we're going to divide 9 by 4. 4 goes into 9 two times, and when I subtract, I get 1, which is 1 fourth. And earlier, we already had, after we worked through the simplest form, 1, or 2, and 1 fourth. So sometimes you may have to multiply all the way out, if you'd like, and then put it into simplest form, which is going to require some work. Or you can use cancellation to cancel numbers out before you multiply. It's going to make your multiplication so much easier um, in the end. So let's look at number two. If I were to just multiply this out, top times top, bottom times bottom, three times eight is 24. And eight times nine is 72. So my fraction right now is 24 over 72 but i have to put that into simplest form so i have to think of numbers that go into 24 that also go into 72. now there's a lot of numbers that go into both of those two three four six twelve okay all of those numbers can go into to both of them 24 even goes into both of those. So I would have to do a lot of dividing to get this in the simplest form. We could try 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. 72 divided by 12 is 6. But I'm still not done. I still have to divide again. Divide by 2, divide by 2 and I get one-third. Now, we're going to use cancellation this time to solve the same problem, and we're going to get one-third before or right after we multiply. So let's look. We are looking at numbers that are diagonal from each other. So what can go into three that also can go into nine that I can divide by? The number is three. Three can go into both of those. So I'm going to divide three by three. Three divided by three is one. And nine divided by three is three. Those are going to stay our numbers now. Then we're going to look the other way. We're going to look at eight and eight. Well, obviously eight can go into both numbers. So I'm going to divide both numbers by 8 before we even start. 8 goes into 8 once. 8 goes into 8 once. And now I have 1's on the top and a 1 and the 3 on the bottom. So when I take top times top, I get 1. Bottom times bottom, I get 3. And it's already in simplest form. Number three, we'll solve it by placing 27 over one, and then we'll do top times top, bottom times bottom, two times 27. If you need help, you can go off to the side and do 27 times two which is going to give you 54. So we're going to get 54 as our numerator. 3 times 1 is 3 as the denominator. Well, this is improper, so we could TiVo this. So we go 54 divided by 3. It goes into this two time, one time. That would give me 2. 
bring down the four. Eight or three goes into twenty-four eight times. And I get eighteen. So our answer for this problem is 18. But if we go back and we use cancellation, we could get to 18 as soon as we multiply. So again, we're going to put 27 over 1. And then we're going to look diagonally. There is nothing that goes into 2 and 1 besides 1. So we're going to leave that alone. But if I look at 27 and 3, what could we divide both 27 and 3 by? The answer is 3. 3 goes into both numbers. 3 goes into 27 nine times. And 3 goes into 3 one time. So now when I take top times top, bottom times bottom, I get 18 over 1, and remember what we said, anything over 1 is just that number. That would be 18. Number 4, before we start, let's use cancellation here to solve this entire problem here. So again, we are looking for numbers that can go into 5 and 5. Obviously, 5 is going to go into both of those. So we're going to divide. We're going to simplify this problem before we even multiply. So we're going to try to put it into simplest form and then multiply it out. So that way we can get to the answer much quicker than having to try to keep dividing and put it into simplest form at the end. So 5 goes into 5 one time. And 5 goes into the other 5 one time. Now, that would work, and we could multiply, but we would still have to put it into simplest form because let's look at the other numbers. What can go into 3 that also can go into 12 when you divide? 3 can go into both numbers. So I'm going to divide 3 by 3, which is 1, and 12 divided by 3 is 4. It makes our multiplication so much easier now. 1 times 1 is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. And our fraction is already in simplest form. Now, if we were to just multiply this out, we would take 5 times 3, which is 15, and 12 times 5, which is 60, and then we would need to divide those numbers. Well, we know 5 goes into both numbers. 5 goes into 15 three times. And 5 goes into 60 12 times. Then we could divide again by 3. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into... 12 four times and we get to our answer now remember when we started the problem at the beginning we divided both 12 and 3 by 3 and we divided 5 and 5 by 5 so we did all of our simplifying first and then multiplied the problem out rather than multiply it and then try to divide because there's going to be several problems maybe even on your homework that are going to be very large numbers when you multiply and then you have to come up with all the factors of those numbers so you can put it in simplest form it's going to be easiest if you divide it then multiply as we look to questions number five six seven and eight I want to show you that not every single problem are you going to be able to cancel before you multiply. And if you cannot do any cancellation, that's because the fraction is going to be in simplest form as soon as you multiply it. So let's look at question five here. There is nothing that is going to go into one and five 
that you can divide by. And there's nothing that goes into 2 and 3 that you can divide by besides 1. So because I cannot cancel anything, I know this fraction is already going to be in simplest form. Now remember, we did this problem at the very beginning. Top times top is 3. Bottom times bottom is 10. And 3 tenths is in simplest form. Now on number 6 here, Again, you have to look diagonally. So we're looking at 2 and 5. There is nothing that goes into 2 and 5 but 1. And there's nothing that goes into 3 and 4 besides 1. So we cannot cancel or we cannot simplify this fraction anymore. So now once you have that, you just take top times top, which is 8, and bottom times bottom, which is 15, and this fraction is in simplest form. So that's the nice thing about cancellation is that you're trying to simplify it before you even multiply it all. Once you do that, it's already in simplest form. On number seven, nothing can go into one and eight besides one, and nothing can divide into three or five besides one. So we know it's gonna be in simplest form. Let me erase this from earlier. 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 8 is 24. And our answer is 5 24 Last one, same thing. I put 4 over 1. I'm looking at 1 and 1. Again, nothing's going into 1. You're not going to divide those by 1 because it's going to stay the same. And nothing can go into 4 and 5 besides 1. So we know this is already going to be in simplest form. Top times top, bottom times bottom. Answer, 4 fifths. It's already in simplest form. As we look down here, we're going to have you work some of these out on your own. But before we do that, I want to circle a few so that you get used to looking at for cancellation. So obviously on number nine, we're going to put two over one. And then I want you to look at two and eight. What can I divide each of those by and cross those off and divide them? Divide two by that number, divide eight by that number, and then multiply. Now, if that's still confusing, you can just simply multiply top times top, bottom times bottom, and then simplify when you're done, and you're still going to get to the same answer. Others that would be good to cancel those two numbers. On this one, nothing goes into 7 and 30 besides 1, so you're going to have to multiply that. Now, it is going to give you an improper fraction so that you will divide it. But once you divide it, it's already going to be in simplest form. On the second row here, again, nothing to divide here. You can look at something in 8 and 4, something in 2 and 8 to cancel, and then obviously here, look for something there. All right, go ahead and press pause. I want you to solve questions 9 through 16. Then press play again, and I'll reveal the answers for you. All right. Reveal the answers here. Uh, we'll go ahead and work through these first. You could have used cancellation. Um, if you did not use cancellation on this first one here, you would get two eight which also simplifies if you divide both by 2, you get 1 fourth. We can start by dividing each of them by 2. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 8 four times, and then you get to 1 fourth on the first try here. Number 10, there is no cancellation. Nothing goes into 5 and 4 or 4 and 9. So when you multiply, even though it looks like it should simplify, 16 45ths is in simplest form. There's nothing that goes into both 16 and 45 besides 1. On number 11, 
if you just multiplied it, you would get 2 over 36. And then you would divide each of those by 2, and you would get 1 18th. You could also cancel a 2 and 2 and also 12. So 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 12, or 12 divided by 2 is 6. And then just multiply it. 1 times 1 is 1. 6 times 3 is 18. And that is in simplest form. Number 12, there's nothing to cancel. So we just multiply it. You get 30 over 7. 30 divided by 7, TiVo, is 4. So that's 28. And you get 2. So that's how we got 4 and 2 sevenths. Number 13, again, nothing cancels in 7 or 2 as well as 4 and 5. So you know when you multiply it, it's already going to be in simplest form. Top times top, bottom times bottom. 8 30 fifths. Again, that looks like something that should be put in simplest form, but nothing goes into 8 and 35 besides 1. So it's in simplest form. Number 14, if we multiplied 7 times 4, we would get 28 over 40. 28 over 40, you divide by 4, and you get 7 tenths. You could also cancel, you know 4, again, goes into both 4 and 8. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 8 two times. And then top times top is 7. Bottom times bottom is 10. So our answer is 7 tenths. Number 15 is, is an interesting one. You could just multiply it and get 16 over 24. And then you would have to do some dividing. You could say 8 goes into both. You could divide by 4 and then divide by 2. But if you divided both by 8, you would get 2 thirds, which is what you started with. But that should make sense. Because remember, 8 eighths is equal to one whole. So that problem really was two thirds times one. And anything times one is just that same answer, two thirds. So that's why we started with a number and we multiplied by eight eighths, which is a whole, and we got the same answer. The last one is five times four fifths. You could do 5 times 4, which is 20. 1 times 5 is 5. And then just TiVo that, 20 divided by 5, which is 4. Or if you use cancellation, 5 goes into both of these one time. And then top times top is 4. Bottom times bottom is 1. 4 divided by 1 is just 4. Or anything with anything over 1 is just that whole number. So the answer is 4. If you'd like to press pause and do number 17 and 18 on your own, you can go ahead and press pause now. On number 17, we have 5 6 times 4 fifths of the pets in the pet show five six are cats four fifths of the cats are calico cats what fraction of the pets are calico cats so again we're doing five six times four fifths you can look to cancel here i'm going to look to cancel a five out of the two fives there. So 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. I'm also going to look at 4 and 6. What can divide into 4 that also can divide into 6? That is 2. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 6 three times. So now we finish with 1 times 2 is 2. And 3 times 1 is 3. 
So we would say that two thirds of the pets are calico cats. Five cats each ate one fourth the cups of canned food and one fourth cups of dry food. How much food did they eat all together? So we have five times one fourth. So five cats eating one fourth each. That's of the canned food. And then we also have five cats eating one fourth of the dry food. And then we're going to add those two answers together. So obviously when we multiply each one of these, we're going to get the same answer. So five, put it over one. We have five times one is five. And one times four is four. So they've eaten five fourths of the canned food, which we can Tebow that and get five divided by four, which is one and one fourth. So they ate one and one fourth of the canned food. This is also going to be the same because it's the same problem. One and one fourth of the dry food. So we want to add one and one fourth plus one and one fourth. And we're going to get two and then one fourth plus one fourth is two fourths. Two fourths is the same as one half. So the five cats ate two and one half cups of the canned and dried food. Let's go ahead and look at our homework here. Tonight for homework, you are going to do questions number three, four, five, six, and seven, as well as number 12 and 13. You can get rid of eight, nine, and 10. We're gonna skip those problems. Be careful on question number 13, because as you read through it, you only see one fraction here. A group of students attended a math club. Half of the students are boys and four ninths of the boys have brown eyes. What fraction of the group are boys with brown eyes? So at first you only see one fraction, but don't forget that half of the students are boys and four ninths of those boys have brown eyes. So we're gonna multiply those two fractions together. If you look to the back, again, you're taking number one, Fritz attended band practice for five sixths of an hour. Then he went home and practiced for two fifths as long as he did for band practice. So we're going five six times two fifths. You can use cancellation to solve there. Number two, Darlene read five eighths of a 56 page book. How many pages did Darlene read? So five eighths of 56. Of tells us we're gonna multiply. We're gonna multiply this by 56. Now, what's unique about this problem when you get to Schoology to put your answers in, when you get an answer here, it's gonna be a whole number. But on the question, it says that you're gonna use a number line to choose where your answer is at. So the number line here at the bottom, this answer, you're going to drag the arrow to whatever number or above whatever number it is on the number line. So place that arrow, draw this here. You're gonna take that arrow and you're gonna place it above wherever this answer for the number of pages that she's going to read. Number three, what is the quotient of 18 over 1,000 or 18 thousandths. We want you to write this 
as a decimal. As a decimal, so you could take 18 divided by 1,000. Obviously, 1,000 isn't going to go into 18, so you can add a decimal and add a zero, and then keep working. Does the 1,000 go into 180, and then keep adding zeros as you need. You could also do 18 divided by 1,000 this way. Place your decimal in the number 18, and then swoop the decimal. Remember, as we swoop the decimal for 1,000, it moves three times. And remember, divide means swoop the decimal to the left. So swoop the decimal to the left for divide, and 1,000 has three zeros, so you're swooping it three times. So you can do either one. If you swoop the decimal, if you remember, or you can actually divide the problem out to get your answer. My last hint would be, listen to how this fraction is read. 18 thousandths. 18 thousandths. Is there a decimal that could be written that has 18 thousandths? Number four, a machine produces 1,000 bowling pins per hour. If each valued at $8.37, what's the total value of the pins produced in one hour? Well, they can make a thousand, and we're going to multiply this by $8.37. Now we're multiplying, so we're moving the decimal to the right. And remember, a thousand means three times. So go ahead and swoop the decimal to the right and then enter it into the computer for that problem. Number five, Keith had eight and a half cups of flour. He used five and two thirds cups to make bread. How much does he have left? Those are key words there. The last question here, number six, the blue trail is 11 and three eighths miles long. Gemma has two and a half miles, or he hikes two and a half miles each hour for three hours. So he goes two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half. For, those are his three hours, first hour, second hour, third hour. So he add those up for three hours. Then when you get this answer, we want to know how far is she from the end of the trail? So if Gemma hikes two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, how far away from the end of the trail is she? We want to subtract this answer from 11 and 3 eighths. Don't forget, you must find a common denominator. All right, this ends today's lesson. Great job today, guys. If you have any questions, please reach out. Have a good day.